You're listening to BBC Upload. I'm Hannah here with you oh, until 8pm. It's just gone 20 to 7. And we're chatting this evening about whether you've actually taken yourself out on a date by yourself. <laughs> it seems to be a bit of a trend on social media at the moment. The idea of a solo date. And that can be taking yourself to the cinema or maybe just going to read a book or something by yourself. Is the topic of Uploader Bob Lever's monologue tonight. I invite myself out for meals. And I buy myself flowers and chocolates. That's Trish from Leeds, who plays the character Lorraine. I hope you like this as much as I do. Do you just love positive spin speak? Like when a problem becomes a challenge, an opposite of good is not so good. Flannel by any other name. I love language. I find it endlessly fascinating. Especially when it's used creatively. Like latest one I saw the other day on eBay. Pre-loved. Applicable to items to be sold like they were a treasure to be shared. And not as used and unwanted garbage. Positive spin, you see. I think I'll use that one to describe my previous long-term relationship. I were once pre-loved, you know. And that makes it sound and feel so much better. Got me thinking about setting up my own eBay account. I've plenty to sell off. Pre-love wedding band, 18 karat gold. I'm worth its weight if no else. Pre-love wedding dress, worn once, slightly soiled. And a shed load of pre-love commitments that came to know. I'll put them up for offers starting at around 99p. I'll await the stampede. Six months ago when I got downsized, I struggled to put a positive spin on anything. Today, I'm happy to report, I can put a positive spin on almost, oh, finally. I'm starting to feel like my old self again. And boy, does it feel like something approximating good. As I reflect back on the last six months and beyond, I can see it's been full of ups, and not so ups. My negativity, I subsequently realised, was driven by a lack of self-love, and consequently I now commit to loving myself on a regular basis. I invite myself out for meals, and I buy myself flowers and chocolates, and I help me all down. I even wisp sweet nothings to myself. Yeah, I've become the partner I always needed. I bring an attitude of gratitude to play. I know it sounds more like corporate connery, but it works. Trust me, be grateful that you don't have to lie awake listening to him snore. Be grateful you don't have to wash his pants, listen to him moan, baby him when he's barley. In time, you'll see it spill over into unbridled happiness. Today, I'm most grateful for taking French as a foreign language in school. That's why I retired to my little bolt hole in France, taking early retirement, and for the freedom to flirt with Monsieur Thibault when he gives me glad eye while serving me my jumbo baguette at a local cafe. And therein lies the difference. Calling a weakness an opportunity is only to avoid calling it a weakness. Turning a weakness into an opportunity is something else entirely. I don't need to describe myself as pre-loved because I'm a treasure to be shared. I just need rest of world to catch on. I love it so much. You can find all of Bob's monologues on his YouTube channel, which is called Bobalog. <laughs> How good is that? Very impressive. Well, uploader and radio playwright Bob Lever discovered something amazing about his friends. You know, sometimes people think they can act and they can't. And she absolutely got it. She really got what I was trying to do. Yeah, it turns out from Trish from Leeds is amazing at acting and is the star of 
many of Bob's plays and monologues, which he posts to his YouTube channel called... It's so actually called Bobog. <laughs> actually, I remember when I was doing drama at school, it was actually really hard to find monologues to do school auditions for and things like that. So what is it about monologues that you think is so special? When I get an idea, I run with it and, <laughs> uh, and that's where we are. I wonder if when actors read your work, particularly these monologues, do they ever bring something to it that you couldn't have imagined when you wrote it? Always. Mm. Yeah, always. I mean, I'm, I'm very very fortunate in having a group of friends because I went to, I studied drama at Bretton Hall College. And so I have a lot of uh, owls who are not who were actors and um, who will help me out because <laughs> they're <laughs> good people. And so I'm, I'm quite, selective about who I, you know what pieces I give to whoever but in this particular instance the one that you're listening to it's Trish and she's not a trained actor when I was looking for someone for, to do this particular one and in a, a previous monologue um, she um, volunteered really and I couldn't believe it when she recorded them she was so good you know and you know, sometimes people think they can act and they can't. And she absolutely got it. She really got what I was trying to do. And her voice is lovely and it's really warm. And and yeah, she brings personality and character to to the piece. But I, 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 could I have imagined it? I don't know really, but she's just such a brilliant job. And I'm, I'm so delighted with her performances for me. I could really feel the emotion in the piece. So I just wondered whether it was something that Trish actually maybe there was an element to it that resonated with her yeah, reading it potentially. So uh, I just thought that was really lovely. Yeah. Well, I, I think, you know, I mean, hopefully with my monologues, the strength of them is that they do resonate with people. I think even if it's not directly your personal experience, you can relate it. You can relate, you know, people's stories to your own story and they make you think about your own stories. Also, it, you know, potentially makes you feel more of a connection with people because you, you can see that they're experiencing stuff that you're experiencing and maybe you're not saying to anybody else. And the monologues are a very honest way of sharing your interior monologue. You know, your interior dialogue, I suppose. That people are exposing themselves in a way that you wouldn't normally. Or if you did, it would be to be like a really, really good friend or a therapist or... So yeah, I hope people find, recognise themselves or elements of themselves in my world. How nice is that? Uploader Bob Lever there.